For tonight's forum, let's review the rules. We have five Democratic candidates, three for the newly created House of Representatives, District 22, and two for the new Ohio State Senate, District 21. To manage this, we have allocated 45 minutes for the three House candidates and 30 minutes for the two Senate candidates. There will be a 10-minute break in between. <clears throat> if you feel you need more information at the end of tonight, we encourage you to talk with the candidates after the forum or visit the candidates' websites. Each candidate will have two minutes for an opening statement and two minutes for a closing statement, follow, followed by, for the, after the opening statement, they will have a question and answer session. Time limits will be strictly enforced. Our timers will give candidates one minute and 30 second warnings and a signal when their time has ended. To keep things moving, we'll also ask the candidates use one of the table mics and stand at their place when delivering opening and closing statements. Only written questions will be accepted. Questions are to be succinct and should be addressed to one or more candidates. All candidates will have the opportunity to answer when appropriate. Please raise your hand to receive a card on which to write your question or raise your hand when you want to turn in a card. Candidates will have one minute to respond to questions. League screeners will review the submitted questions in order to avoid duplication, provide a diversity of questions, and ensure readability and appropriateness. Finally, we ask the cooperation of the audience in avoiding expressions of support or opposition to any of the candidates during the presentation time or their answers to questions. These only take minutes away from our candidates and waste time. We also ask that you refrain from making statements and you, the audience, know that you are here to learn. You'll have your say when you vote. Our second group of candidates is running for the Ohio House of Representatives for District 22. This also is a newly created district. It is a two-year term with an annual salary of $68,674. The candidates are Ms. Juanita Brent, Ms. Danielle Dronay, and Mr. Vincent Stokes. They have drawn numbers to determine the order of their speak, speaking. We will begin with Ms. Drone. Hello, my name is Danielle Drone. I was born in East Cleveland. I moved to New York City. I came to Cleveland Heights, Ohio to start my clinical, my psychoanalytic training. I have a master's degree from USC. I attend, I attend Tulane University. My emphasis is on social policy, in particular, evaluations of organizations that receive grant funding from the government. My interest in that is because we pay a lot of money to taxes. We are citizens who are invested in the well-being of ourselves and our community. We are relying on the government to take our money and do the best they can for us. So it, my, this is my interest in that. I have moved here 10 years ago. I have three children. I have a granddaughter who attends Communion of Saints. I'm an active member in my community in the sense of seeking out economic sovereignty for the citizens of our community. I think there are many things that need to be done here, and part of what needs to be done is that we need to create an infrastructure that is, creates independent, economic independence. We need to create something so that people who live here are able to be free from the amount of problems that come when you don't allow individual members of our community to have access to goods and services. That is everyone that lives here, seniors, young adults, children, 
and I'm here to stand to have that happen for us. Thank you. Hi, my name is State Representative Juanita Brent, and experience matters when it comes to this election. I've been serving as a State Representative in Ohio General Assembly for almost four years, and within that time period, it's just definitely important that we work together as a fist and not a bunch of fingers when it comes to how representation occurs. I work for you, and working for you means that I am make sure I'm always fighting to increase the local government fund, because with that way, our local mayors and city council people can be able to make more decisions when it comes to state dollars, no matter if it's for infrastructure, for police, for fire, it's just very vital that that's going on. Also, we want to make sure we protect our most vulnerable populations, which is our children and our senior, senior citizens as we live here within the state of Ohio, and making sure, most importantly, we are fighting for public school funding. When we move into our communities, people move into communities because of how good the schools are, no matter if you have children or not. We have to look at alternative ways on how we can fund that and make sure that no school district ever has a jeopardy of ever becoming bankrupt or not be able to have equity within the services that we deal with. Within this time period of being a state rep, I've been able to bring, just within these last couple of months, almost $24 million for community projects that we have. And it's so vital that you get things done by bringing home the money here within the state of Ohio. I am very open to working with everyone and making sure you have a bipartisanship within the state of Ohio. You cannot talk about being at the state of Ohio if you are not trying to be working across the aisle because nothing gets done unless you do that. I'm a fighter, but then I'm also a person who wants to make sure we keep people informed, no matter if you're doing a town hall meeting, no matter if we are making phone calls or just passing out postcards to let people know on how we can work together as a fist and not a bunch of fingers. Thank you, my name is Juanita Brent. I'm the only incumbent in the race. And our third, third candidate is Mr. Stokes. Good evening. Thank you to the League of Women Voters for hosting this, and thank you for the advocacy work you've done downstate to try to get us legal lines for this district. My name is Vincent E. Stokes II, and I am running for state representative in District 22. I was born and reared at 3377 Washington Boulevard in Cleveland Heights. I grew up here. My grandmother purchased her house here in 1972. However, in 2006, during the fall of the housing market, my grandmother lost her house because she could not afford to pay the taxes on it after she had spent 30 years trying to pay it off. I am an advocate in this community. I was voted citizen of the year in the city of University Heights for working in my community. I'm a person who strives for doing what is right and strives for doing what is good. I'm a preacher, the assistant pastor at the New Sardis Primitive Baptist Church, and I also am a teacher in the second largest school district in, in Ohio, Cleveland Metropolitan School District. So as a teacher, as a preacher, and as a parent, I know what it takes to take on people and fight for what is right and do what is just. My name is Vincent E. Stokes II, and I'm not scared to fight for what is right and what is just. Remember, when you see a good fight, get in it, and this is our fight. Thank you. So I'm going to start on the questions and answers. Each one of you will have a chance to answer each question unless this is directed at one person. How will you advance your agenda as a member of the minority, part, um, minority party in a Republican supermajority legislature? And you can go in any order you want. First one to stand gets to speak. I guess I'll go first. So right now we are dealing with the super minority, but relationships are everything. Nothing gets passed without having those relationships. That's mean you are sitting down and you are talking to people. And most of the most prevalent things is that people don't see is all the sit downs that you have to do. The first thing that I did once coming to the state house is having sit downs with every legislator, no matter if they were Democrats or Republicans, because it's important that we kind of hear everybody's story or where they're coming from and what they value. And a lot of times what you realize with your colleagues is that we value the same things, our children, we value the infrastructure within our community, and we want to have safe communities within ourselves, but it takes having those conversations and figuring out where do we see eye to eye and then push forward with that, because everything at the State House has to be bipartisan. They don't let Democrats do any type of bills unless there is another Republican on it. So having those conversations is always the first step, and then informing our communities to let them know how we're gonna move forward together. So, one of the problems I think we have, can you hear me? 
Can you hear me? One of the problems I think we have is that the Democratic Party. No? You have to get it closer, better, closer better, to your better, mouth. Better. <laughs> so yeah. I think one of the problems that we have is that the Democratic Party is losing strength among the, the working families, among regular people. And so how do we strengthen our own party is that we strengthen the people themselves. That is how we bring strength to Columbus. If our people in our community are not voting, they're not saying anything, then we are not going to be heard on Capitol. We need to have the community feel, how do we do that? Is that the needs of the people at the street level, at where we are now, that their needs are met. Then they have time to sit, they have time to think about voting and come to the polls and vote. Unless we satisfy that need, we will not make a position against the House that's being controlling us now, or the Republicans. Mr. Stokes. Thank you. Uh, Cleveland Heights High School class of 2003 had this saying, and it was working together works. And we have to, while well, we have to work together with our colleagues on the other side of the aisle as the Republicans, we do need to work with them, but we have to be willing to fight. Fighting not only must not happen downstate, fighting must happen in our district. I have seen how we, as a collective people, have gone downstate collectively to fight against laws. And in fighting against those laws, we have been able to stop them, we have been able to halt them, we have been able to, to make them reevaluate how they're going to do it. It does not just happen in the halls of the State House, it happens also on the streets of our cities. And if we are organized on our cities and we see that they have certain laws that we don't like, and we go down there with a collective voice together, we can do something about it. While we might have a super minority, we have a super majority in our district, and our district can use our voice to go down state to make things happen. Next question, <clears throat> what will you each do for East Cleveland? There you go. Yes? Okay, so I opened my practice in South Collinwood. I became friends with, oh, there, there, it's the angle. Can you hear it? Yeah. So when I first came here from New York City, I joined some, a few nuns who had an organization. I joined it, I jumped in. I started, the, I started an organization so that we could provide housing, so that we could buy food, so we could provide tutoring. From that led me to East Cleveland. The majority of my patients and the people that I serve are in East Cleveland. How can we help them? They need a food, they need food. They don't need food from the food bank. They need a grocery store. They need roads that are safe. They need a place that they can walk from one place to another. They need transportation. They need the bus to show up. They need to be sheltered from the, from the weather. They need to, un we need to understand everybody that's shaker, all of us, we cannot just drive by as if they don't matter. They matter. They, they, East Cleveland is the entry point to every business here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. For East Cleveland, I think we all need to be of the mindset that East Cleveland is a part of our district and we all must fight to make sure that East Cleveland is prosperous. One thing that I know for a fact that we can do if, if I'm elected, and I know for a fact that I can do, is be an advocate for increasing local government funds to go to East Cleveland. East Cleveland needs the funds, they need the money so that they can have a sustainable government down there. There are people there who have lived there for years. I have cousins who have lived in East Cleveland for 60 plus years and refuse to leave because they say it's their home. The people in East Cleveland love their property, love their community, love their homes like we do in every other aspect of this district, and we need to support them by giving them more local government funds and supporting their local government in that way. Particularly when you talk about East Cleveland, just like in Lincoln County, where we're building into basically in the middle of nowhere, we need to bring economic opportunities to the people of East Cleveland in particular. There's so many different opportunities that are coming to the state of Ohio, and if we know we have an area that's more distressed than another area, let's intentionally put in investments. And we can do that here within the state of Ohio. We are in a surplus. So if we see areas that are distraught, we need to make sure there's equity when it comes to funding of infrastructure. Like I've said at the beginning, we have to 
to fund the local government funds so our local communities can do that. We also have to make sure that we are putting money at, at risk services within our community. We can't just say, oh, we have schools or oh, we have people living here. You have to deal with those at risk factors of different things of people just not having housing, not having affordable housing. And the state can address all of those issues within a community to make sure we're addressing housing, infrastructure, making sure there's economic development all within the city of um, East Cleveland. Thank you. This is for all candidates. What will you do to move Aisha's law legislation forward? Thank you. Uh, I think it's important that we first start off by saying that domestic violence is a real issue and it's an issue in our community. I think as a, not as a candidate, but if I'm elected to this position, uh, working with my current uh, people downstate, working with them to pass the law, I think it's important that we pass this law because domestic violence is real. Uh, I experienced it as a child in my own home, and I know the, the secondary traumas that come from it. So working with my colleagues downstate to make sure the law passes, uh, to advocate for uh, uh, gun laws that support uh, keeping people safe who are in domestic violence situations. So I think those are two real ways that we can address Aisha's law. Thank you for that question. This um, bill is actually definitely very personal to me because I personally knew Aisha from us going to church together over the years. And so now that this bill has on its second try inside of the General Assembly, we are working with the local prosecutors, the public defenders, the forensic nurses to get that bill out of the Senate. It's literally sitting in committee right now. We just had a, a meeting with Chairman uh, Manning to actually have this bill needed to get it voted out. But now what I'm actually physically doing myself is calling all the uh, members on the committee to get the vote, because that's what you have to do. That means I've had to physically travel, even today, that's why I'm looking a little tired, because I had to physically go down to Columbus and have a meeting with them to say why is it important that we have this bill not just come out of committee, but vote it out out of the Senate chamber and then also for the governor to sign it. It's long overdue and this Aisha's law affects everyone and people have to feel seen in the state of Ohio if we want people to stay in, in this state to make sure that they are safe at home. Thank you. The reason the law hasn't passed, I think, is because domestic violence, we are blind to it. We don't collect data in the police stations. Other cities don't collect data. It's not public record. So if we don't have public record that all of us can see so that we can ourselves understand how much domestic violence is happening in our own communities, we're just, we're just blind to it. But if we have data, data drives people to take action. Part of the problem also in passing Aisha's law is that women, who, many women who are domestic violence victims are the poor. Poor women are the most affected by it because they have no resources. So Cuyahoga County, if it was placed on a blockchain, that means all the services for domestic violence in for um, women. They're information would be housed in a data system. That data system would allow them to leave at any time and have all their resources with them. When that happens, women are much more able to get up and leave. They have an opportunity. They're not economically held hostage. Thank you. This question is for Ms. Brent. It's a two-part question. Did you vote for HB6? Pardon? If yes, if yes, did you take money from First Energy? Well, this is an easy answer. I did not vote. I voted no on, on House Bill 6, which is the $1 billion bailout for First Energy. I've never received money for First Energy. Those people at First Energy don't even like me. And I'm gonna tell you the reason why they don't like me because when they came and presented the bill, the bill was just very problematic. It wanted to take renewable energy, and, wanted to, and they kept on telling people that it was gonna threaten people's jobs. They literally said, all of these people live in your district, they're gonna lose their jobs if you vote for this bill. I got the list from the lobbyists and I went to everybody's house that worked for First, First Energy in my district. That made them big mad at me to the point where the First Energy people who now still are at the State House don't talk to me. And it was very problematic that it was being used by a lot of people in our community to try to say it was a jobs bill, but it was not helping to keep people's jobs because they still, 
you know, it's just we're, we're taking money from people who are poor who don't have it within the community. So I've never received First Energy money, and I voted no for House Bill 6, which is a $1 billion bailout for First Energy. When we're trying to bail out an energy company, we need to be bailing out our communities, too. Thank you. <clears throat> for each person, each candidate, what is your position on women's reproduct reproductive rights? And what have you done to support your position? Any or any order? I support women's reproductive rights. I support what that we have a right to make our own choices in life. I support that. Oh, sorry. Better. <laughs> and the we don't as women. We are so limited in our ability to move forward because we don't have the resources that we need. Foster care is not available in this county in the way that would even allow the children that we already have to be well cared for. All those infrastructures need to be looked at. We need to examine our, pro our taxes, our money is going to support the kids. They're not getting the assistance. So why would we turn around and tell a woman, you must have a baby and we have no ability to help you out? That we cannot tolerate. My position is, is a woman's body is a woman's choice. Uh, what I've done to support that is when uh, the Dobbs Act was passed, or not passed, but when the Supreme Court ruled on it, uh, it was a lobby day downstate uh, earlier this month. I went downstate and lobbied with uh, Planned Parenthood as a result of that, and I also write checks, so that's how I support. So when, we, when the House bill, the Senate bill introduced the six week, the heartbeat bill, which is another problematic bill. I voted no on that bill. And I actually co-sponsored a bill, which is the Reproductive Freedom Bill, House Joint Resolution Number 5, which we are trying to get on the ballot, which is very important that we address that. Because this is a privacy act. This is a privacy act between a woman and her doctor to be able to make those decisions every day. When this got overturned and became public, the first thing I did was to join people in the community. And we went to the Market Garden. We spoke at the. Um, um, down at the state house, may I even spoke at the market, um, the free stamp, and making sure you're just educating people on who they need to contact, no matter if it's the chairman and all the people on the committee, to say these are the people that's going to be addressing this issue at the state house and why you need to get in contact with them and how you can get in contact with them by easily just sending that information out. We have to inform the people in our community because we have to work like a fist and not a bunch of fingers about addressing this issue. Next question. <clears throat> what is your position regarding the educational choice funding for private and religious schools? I'll start. Uh, I'm an educator, so I teach every day in Cleveland Metropolitan School District, and I see on a daily basis how school choice continues to decimate school budgets. So in the state of Ohio, Students have, students have to stay in school until the middle of October. By the middle of October, they send the names downstate. When they send the names downstate, that solidifies their roles. When the roles are solidified at private schools, they usually send the problematic children back to the public schools. So when they send them back to the public schools, the funding does not follow them. I am totally against funding education that I do not have a say so in with my finances as a taxpayer. If I'm paying for your child to go to a school, I need to be able to say something in regards to how that school is being ran. I should be able to say something in regards to what the curriculum is in that school based upon the Board of Education by the state of Ohio. But with private schools, you do not. So I am against Ed Choice and Ed Choice Grants. So I'm Catholic. And my daughter, my granddaughter actually, goes to Communion of Saints. I've gone to Catholic school, my family has gone to Catholic school our whole lives. When I moved here, I had no idea about this entire disruption within Ohio regarding Catholic, between private schools and the voucher. So I've been heavily thinking about this since I moved here actually. Um, and so what I would say to my own faith and to other faiths is that we have to stand up and we have to decide how we're going to care for ourselves. We are a united front. We can pull together. 
and we must pull away from the state money and decide how we're going to support our children, support our faith, and do it ourselves. There's enough of us on this planet that we can do that. Read the question. Um, what is your position regarding educational choice funding for private and religious schools? First, we have a problem with just within our Constitution that we have to fund them. That's the, that's the first problem that is put within the Constitution. So right now, constitutionally, we do have to deal with that. I am 100% pro public schools because people have to have a voice and that's the importance of having school board members and school superintendents because it allows people to have a voice and say so within their community and so also about your tax dollars. We also have to just say that it makes no sense that we are doing this at the detriment of our public schools. If our public schools are not being properly funded because they're taking away so many vouchers, then we're gonna end up like Louisiana that has no public schools. All they have is charter schools and the people have no say so what's going on in their community. And I feel like if we keep on going the road that we're gonna do, the first place in Ohio that you're really gonna see that particularly is gonna be Cleveland Heights University High School District because it's on the verge of being bankrupt. So we have to figure out how we can deal with school funding particularly to deal with this issue. Thank you. <clears throat> What is the role of state government in combating, <clears throat> combating climate change? Got that? <laughs> climate change. <clears throat> I'll go first this time. Since <laughs> so the role of the state government is leading the, the role. When we decided to, well, when I decided to vote no against House Bill 6, which is the first energy bailout, what we did was jeopardize our climate and we look at these hot days as the world is telling us that it's not enough. We can make investments to make sure that we have tax credits for solar panels, make sure we have tax credits for thermal energy buildings, the lead buildings that we have within our communities. We have to make sure that the policies fit the people. We also can pass House Bill 422, which I'm a co-lead sponsor of, which is the Energy Jobs and Justice Act, where we can make those necessary investments to make sure we have a whole department that deals with that. Because disproportionately within our urban communities, we have people who have asthma, we have people who have bronchitis, we have people who have eczema, because we have not been good about our, 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 our environment. We have to make that as a focus within our state by how we pol um, put our tax dollars and our policy to really address that if we really want to protect all the people here within the state of Ohio. Thank you. What we do is we attach solar to the Homestead Extension. Currently the Homestead Extension is at 34,000. There is a house bill to move it to 37. That is not enough. When you're looking at maintaining your house, there's two issues you need to be concerned with. Taxes on one side and the utilities on the other. If we attach solar to the, to the homestead extension, then solar then becomes available to everyone. So then everyone is able to then invite themselves to help the environment. If we don't do it that way, solar itself or any other type of renewable energy is very expensive. It's not available to the average person. So if we do it, we do it that way as a community. It is the state's responsibility to keep her citizens safe. And the way that the state can keep her citizens safe is by encouraging and continue to legislate for positive action in regards to uh, uh, issues with, in regards to the, not the economy, but in regards to the ecology of this, of this city and of this uh, state. I think it's important that we stand firm and stand up for keeping the state safe in regards to keeping, keeping our uh, community safe and keeping our community healthy in regards to the, um, repeat your question. <laughs> <laughs> I got caught up. <clears throat> what is the role of the state government in combating climate change? Climate change. So in regards to climate change, I'm, all this was going back to climate change. Thank you. So I think we need to be standing firm and standing up on climate change and standing for climate change and ensuring that we are doing all we can as a community to ensure that we're doing all that we can keep things safe. Okay. Thank you. Today, today, the Ohio Supreme Court, yet again, rejected the GOP proposal of the lines drawn uh, for redistricting to favor Republican candidates. What are your views about this and what would you do about it, if anything, if you were elected?
the Republicans continue to draw unconstitutional lines, and they continue to uh, try to uh, get away from what the, the people of the state have said. I think it's important that we have a nonpartisan uh, council that is drawing the lines. I think it's important that we have non-elected officials doing it, people who care about the state of Ohio, who don't have a vested interest to gerrymander the state so that they can uh, uh, push some agenda downstate, but have s separate uh, uh, organizations leading the way and not having state representatives doing the drawing, although the Constitution says that. So we need to change the Constitution again, put forth another amendment, change it, because what we're doing right now ain't working. <laughs> I agree with Reverend Stokes. We should not be having our state legislators be involved in it. We need a third party who are experts in the whole issue of map making and looking at the what we all need within our own communities so that they can bring to us and bring to the people about what is happening, what map works best for all of us instead of us just going back. It's such a waste of tax dollars that this is just going back and forth. We don't need to have this. This is why we're all sitting here now. This is an improper way to manage our government. We have to put this back on the ballot like we did before. When we passed this before and it was won overwhelmingly, people was thinking that people are gonna play the rules safely. We do need an independent commission and need to bring outside people, even from outside of the state. And that's what we had to do. And even with the independent commission, the, the redistricting commission turned down their maps too. So it's just very problematic that even with people who don't have invested interest were not considered for their maps. There are a lot of people who offer really great maps. Even within this room, I see at least three of you guys who offered up maps who just really want to see our community do well. But it's sad that we have to put this back on the ballot and not our General Assembly saying that we should just do the right thing by the people that we serve here within the state of Ohio. So that's the first thing. And it becomes even sadder because we have this map that lasts for two years. And a couple more months when I get back in November, I will be voting for another set of maps, which is even more problematic because we will have to be doing this song and dance of map changing around again here within um, the General Assembly. Could I just clarify your answer? Um, does that mean that we need to do a ballot initiative and have a large number of people sign petitions to get that on the ballot? Yes, it needs to be a ballot initiative because that's how we got it on there before. A uh, final question. <clears throat> How will each of you work to limit or not access to assault weapons? Assault weapons. How, you, how will you work or not? I'm getting hoarse and I haven't even talked that much. Um, <clears throat> to, to limit access to assault weapons. Here within the state of Ohio, we are seeing it over and over again where we're seeing people that have no business and no education when it comes to touching guns. For one, I actually co-sponsored a bill to get rid of all assault weapons here within the state of Ohio. We are not at war with each other. We are each other's neighbors. Why do we need assault weapons? I co-sponsored a bill to make sure that everyone has to have a criminal background check. If you don't have anything in your background, what are you concerned about us having that? And also co-sponsored a bill about Gun Education Week and Gun Education Month because it's important for folks to understand about guns and for us to even teach them when they're younger about the importance of safety within our community of what guns can do. We have to keep on pushing the barrel of that and we keep on seeing that over and over again of people telling us what they want and us as a state house not doing that. Every time people came to me in our community about gun reform, I've gone and helped author the bill or went and co-sponsored the bill because we have to do something about gun reform. That is a priority and it's actually one of the bills that they are telling us that we are going to be voting on when we go back in November. I got in this race because of gun laws. That's why I got in this race, because of House Bill 99. Uh, before I got here today, I received an email from Moms, is Moms Demand Action. And they said they chose me as a candidate who was a strong, or a strong candidate against gun, uh, gun violence. And I am. I'm against uh, all issues with guns. Uh, and when you talk about assault rifles, you're talking about someone who has the ability to literally should kill multiple people in the span of seconds. And we don't need anyone who has that type of access. I don't care if you have, if you pass the background check or not. It's not needed. 
There's no need to kill uh, anyone or anything with that, much, that many rounds in that little, little amount of time. I think we need to just ban assault rifles, hard stop. Ban them in the state of Ohio, for they are not needed. People who want to go hunting can get rifles like they have, but we don't need uh, that type of armory in the state of Ohio. We are not in a country where we are in a war where we need that type of, those type of things. So that's my yeah. position. Mr. Renee. So we should ban the assault rifles for sure. That is without saying. I think what we need to think about is that within our Cuyahoga County community is we have people who are economically suffering. They don't have much to rely on. So yes, ban the guns, but can we possibly, as a community, think about how many people in our community, how many times we drive through our community and they have no housing, they can't get to food, they can't get their kids to school. All these issues that are vital to everyday life, when we address those things, when we make sure that the State House is making sure that Cuyahoga County is operating in the way that the bills have intended, that we know that our mothers get to work, that our mothers have childcare, does that not individually bring down the tension within our households? Does that not address the things, the basic things that they need, that parents can be home with their kids? Isn't that something we should think about? We've now gotten to the point where each candidate can make a two-minute closing statement. We will reverse the order from the opening statement, so Mr. Stokes will speak first. My name is Vincent E. Stokes II, and I'm running for state representative here in District 22. I'm tired of paying more for taxes in University Heights than my colleagues pay in Beachwood. I'm tired of going to work day after day and not knowing if I'm going to be shot down as a teacher because we don't have security guards in our school and assault rifles are able to be accessed easily. I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired of these type of issues and I know we as a community are tired of it as well. We have the opportunity to elect someone who was from this city, who knows this city, and who is an advocate in this city and in this area. I think it is important that we continue to work together and in working together we get the job done to make things happen in Cleveland Heights, University Heights, Shaker Heights, East Cleveland, First Ward Cleveland, Warrensville Heights, Highland Hills, and North Randall. We all in this together and if we stick together we can make things happen. You can do that by vo voting Vincent E. Stokes II for state representative in District 22. When you see a good fight, get in it and this is our fight. Let's fight together. <laughs> Ms. Brent. Thank you. My name is Juanita O. Brent, and I've been serving at the State House for almost four years. Within this time period, there is nothing that I have not stood up for, no matter if it's dealing with infant mortality or making sure that our senior citizens have a second set of eyes when it comes to Esther's law that brings cameras into nursing homes, or making sure that we pass our driver's amnesty bill because there's so many people who are not able to drive within the community because they have a suspended driver's license and we don't properly fund public transit. The world is telling us that they're not staying here in Ohio. And we have to figure out how can we make sure that our children, our children, children, and even ourselves are staying here in Ohio by whatever means necessary, by making sure people have affordable housing, make people sure that people can live, work, and retire here within the state of Ohio. During this time period of being a state rep, I've invited the importance of having town hall meetings, having times where you can have office hours where you can meet me right in the community, and making sure that I use my social media to let you know on the official side who I'm having meetings with. You need to know how I spend my time as a state representative, and that's more valuable than anything else. And we have to be in a place where we fight together. So I am the queen of sending out postcards. If anybody knows me from my district, you shaking your head because you probably got one too. Because when stuff happens at the state house, people have to know right away with phone calls, with postcards, with social media ads, to know this is what's going on because we have to work together. You don't just send down somebody and you just walk away from the situation. We are gonna work together to come down there. That means if you're gonna have to show up to committee hearings and we're gonna work this thing out together and we have to fight together because we are fighting for the soul of our community, for our county, for our state, 
for our country right now. And all of this is gonna take a community effort to get that all done. We've seen what it's like, and I've worked with your past state representative, no matter if it's Rep. Janine Boyd, who's currently working for the Biden administration. And that's why when she decided to leave, she told me to take over Aisha's law because she knew that I was gonna be a fighter to get that done. No matter if it's working with Ken Smith, who has an East Cleveland area, because there's, we know we have to deal with the equity issues that's within those communities. So I thank you so much. My name is Juanita Brent, currently serving at the State House. Thank you. Um, Ms. Jornet. Thank you. I think we need some changes here. I think there's things that we can do together. I think that our communities need to unite together. I think we need to not just go around other people's neighborhoods. There are things we can do by making the county held accountable so that what we need gets done. The fiscal office, so that the taxes are done appropriately, so that we can make a stand when something's going wrong. Our county has the highest amount of foreclosures since the housing crisis. That's a lot of people in our community, in our world, that is not getting what they need. So all the bills in the world doesn't seem to be coming down to us so that we can feel the positive effect of them. So what I'm offering you is I promise you that I know what's happening in daily life in our world. And I'm going to ensure that Ohio in Columbus, that they know what's happening. Not the bills they passed, that's, that's great. But the bill has to produce something for us. And they have to demonstrate that it's, we need to know it's working. If you're not on the front asking, engaging, knowing, then there's no way that we can, that they know it's working. There's something happening here for us that we're just ignoring. We've got lots of violence happening. Our kids are, you know, our school scores. We need to shake things up. We need to ask the private schools to manage themselves. I'm in, I'm in on that. And we need to make a change so that there's equilibrium, there's economic equity here. It doesn't exist here. And we must change that. <clears throat> Candidates. Thank you so much for coming and sharing your thoughts with us tonight. <laughs> uh, this concludes our Ohio Democratic Primary Candidates Night for the August 2nd election. I would like to thank all of our planners and volunteers who worked so hard to make this evening possible and thank all of you for attending. Don't forget to pick up your Vote 411 bookmark. Uh, look at the candidates' literature out in the lobby um, and check out uh, websites for the candidates. Most important, don't forget to vote on August 2nd or before. Thank you and good night. <laughs>